With just 10 deaths and a few active cases remaining, Iceland has been held up as an example of how to successfully manage the coronavirus. Well, their lockdown has eased and as of yesterday, the country has reopened for tourism with visitors able to avoid a two-week quarantine by taking a simple test at the airport on arrival. Well, after some confusion over the time difference yesterday, we did eventually manage to speak to the Prime Minister of Iceland and ask her why the country had been so successful. Well, we're joined now by Prime Minister Katrin Jakobsdottir, who uh, says that humility and listening to the science have been the keys to leading her country through this crisis. Uh, good morning, Prime Minister. Morning. Thank you very much indeed for uh, for joining us. Um, and uh, we're looking looking through the figures. So, a population of three hundred and fifty thousand. Um, you've registered one thousand eight hundred and eight cases. 0.5% of the population. Iceland has had only, thankfully, 10 deaths. Currently four active cases in the country, but no patient is in hospital. So, um, so looking at that, you say that it's humility and science that's got you to those really quite admirable figures. In what way does the humility come into it? Well, I think it's very important for politicians to be humble enough to realise that we really don't have all the answers when we are faced by unprecedented uh, conditions like this uh, pandemic and uh, what we have been doing in Iceland is really follow very closely what our scientists are saying but also realizing that as I said we don't have the answers we have really been learning them in the process of this whole pandemic. Um, but what you did do was start testing early would you say that that was a key component of your success? Absolutely, that was a key component. Uh, we did a lot of tests and what we actually did was that 92% uh, of the infections, we managed to trace them and we used to quarantine a lot. So we actually first had a tracing team and then we had a tracing app and we asked people to stay in quarantine if they had been in contact with anyone infected. So 57% of all who were diagnosed uh, with the virus were actually in quarantine when they were diagnosed. Do you think that um, size of population, uh, size of the country, you have more space, you're not quite as crammed in as we are here, um, that, uh, that that has obviously been to your benefit? Obviously, it's been to our benefit. And, you know, we're a small country with 350,000 people. Uh, part of the success of the tracing has been the fact that uh, we nearly know each other, all of us here in Iceland, so it was relatively easier to trace people. Looking at the figures around the world and, and the Prime Ministers around the world, so there's, there's you and your country with, uh, with the figures that we mentioned a moment ago, uh, Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand saying when in uh, Taiwan, all women, are you, are you, are you better at it this, this than the men? It's very tempting to say yes, <laughs> but obviously we have also had some male leaders who are using the same methods. But yeah, it's a remarkable fact that uh, a lot of female leaders have actually been just listening very closely to our scientists. Right now, the biggest task facing us is the reopening of borders, which all our countries are actually contemplating in some uh, using some methods, uh, different methods between countries. So I think we must be very, continue to be very careful and continue to be ready to learn by what well, you have. A, you have a beautiful, beautiful country, which I, I was spellbound with when I was lucky enough to visit. And you are now opening, as you say, you're opening those borders. Tourists are once again welcome. Yeah, we are opening up... Uh, within Europe uh, today, but we're using screening. So everybody who comes to Iceland either has to go to a two weeks quarantine or have a test in the airport. So this is the first day and we will see how it goes. Uh, but we think it's a careful method to open, reopen our borders and then we will evaluate it regularly how, how it is going really. And when you look at us here in the UK, how do you think we handled this pandemic when you look at our numbers compared to your numbers what what do you think well i know the uk has a very sound uh, health system when it comes to the nhs and and i've been listening to what you have been saying about your health services and i i think it shows really the great importance of public health care a public accessible health care who is 
uh, accessible to everybody. We uh, we have our daily briefings uh, here, and the uh, the Prime Minister has uh, chaired quite a lot of them. Um, how how visible have you been as a Prime Minister there? Uh, have, the, uh, have you been obeyed? Have the, the population uh, said, right, OK, yes, well, this is what we're going to do? Um, and have you been out to make sure, you know, that that's what they're doing? Well, obviously, I've chaired some of the press meetings, but... Uh... Actually, we decided that it was uh, that it was uh, more important to have the people who are actually on the floor running the show, <laughs> meaning our uh, chief epidemiologist, uh, our uh, our uh, head of uh, social security with the police, etc. These people were actually on the front line when it came to the daily press briefings. Ministers have been there, though, uh, when we are, when there are some important turning points in decision making. Well, we wish you um, luck, uh, continued success. Uh, thank you very much indeed thank for talking you, to us, Prime Minister. Time. Thank you. Thank you so much, and same to you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye.